<sighs> Grr. How did I get into this mess? That's far enough. You cannot run forever. Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But, but, but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. September 8, 9.08 a.m. This is the court. Defendant lobby number one. What a nightmare. And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Uh. Looks like they hung up. Ah. Good! I finally found it! Talk about a close call! I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney! <laughs> a few minutes later, in District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Ah, it's good to be back. Nick, my man! I hope you didn't have too much fun while I was gone. Ouch. My head. It's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? Had a bad sleep? Good morning! Uh, uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best thing first thing in the morning. Where's the fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Roger that! Um Am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I had done something wrong. But what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Life in my hands? Yeah, man. It's the same old, same old song and dance. It is time for us to defend our client, like we usually do, while uncovering the truth of the murder. And find the real killer! You promised me! You said you would prove that I was not guilty! N not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had left me off! Leave it to me! You said! You! The one and only Phoenix Wright! Came to save the day! And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me! Ever! What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always pray for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but uh... Who are you? What? <laughs> don't, don't mind Nick here. He's just... He's just messing with you. He is quite the jokester, this fella here. Ain't I right, Nick? Ain't I right? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? We're absolutely horrible! No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his client, sir? I cannot believe this! 
No, it's just... Um, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? The trial will begin shortly! Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The chance to start. I'm calling on you in there, okay? Um, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see. What can I piece together? Hmm, from our conversation, I can simply say that I'm probably a defense attorney. And that girl, I'd say I'd prove her... I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ah! Uh, someone, please! Tell me this is just a bad dream! Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? September 8, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Nick? You're supposed to say your line here, man. Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. <laughs> well, I do have to apologize on behalf of Mr. Wright here, Your Honor. He is feeling a little... off today. Just... just bear with him. Why does that not surprise me? Oh, eh. uh, yeah. He's ready, Your Honor. And, uh, well, I guess it's my turn. The defense's detective helper is ready, Your Honor. And... Yep. The apple is still up there. Oh, sweet home. I guess I should say yes or no. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a second. If her life is in my hands... I should really do the irresponsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor... My memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you forgot. Eh? Actually, I did. Mr. Payne. Your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you are all aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. Huh. Well, this sounds awfully familiar. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. Um... I'm sorry, but... Do we know you from somewhere? I won't show you any mercy this time, okay? Okay, and who are you again? <laughs> Please bring the Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Hey! Here we go! Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm just so dead. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. What up, Gumshoe? I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Oh, well, sir, the defendant. She works under me, so... 
you know... You work on the dead detective? <laughs> yes, sir. And then while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Oh, my. Gumshoe, my man! What did you do? Did you do something heroic? That's my Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near... Co uh, it happened near at the park near headquarters. Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches of the, on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up and snapped his neck. The details are listed in a report that was distributed yesterday. Oh, yes. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? <laughs> well... <laughs> well, you don't have to worry. It's, n it's not because of your foggy memory. I mean, that sort of stuff happens all the time. <laughs> even, with, even if you had the foggy memory or not. Uh, defense attorneys usually have it rough. I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is usually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy were confirmed the death of the results of the autopsy were confirmed the time of death. If I may, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well. The court upsets it into evidence. Alright. Crime photo number one added to the court record. Let's see about this. Um the victim fell from the walking path above. Alright, well, what do we have over here? We have the corpse. We have... I mean, they said that there are a bunch of benches up there. That he was pushed off of. And then we have... I mean, we have a telemon booth. We have a clock over here. That's important stuff to, to notice. We may be able... We may end up using... The detail, like the time and such. What else? Oh, I mean, we have a bunch of stuff over here. We have glasses found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. Mm-hmm. I do have to wonder whose are those. I mean, Maggie is uh, wearing glasses. So, hmm. Dustin's autopsy report. Time of death... 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Cause, broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cell phone. I found this in my pocket. But I don't remember what it means or how I got there. How it got there. Hmm. And the usual attorney badge. It's my own important badge. It shows that I am a defense attorney. Indubitably. A very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess. Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually... <laughs> it is the payroll. Um, it's just nerves. Just, just give me a second. What? How can you talk like that? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the, the court record. The court record? Yes. It's that button on the on the top right, like up, like up there. Yep. Info about the evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look up at the court record by touching the court record button. The court record button? You really know what you're talking about, huh? Yeah, it does seem that she is well experienced in breaking the fourth wall there. It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think. I could totally be a legal eight instead. 
Mr. Riot. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. S -s Sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> well, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can I can find. I mean, we already checked some stuff over here. I think I got all I need. Hmm. Received during the preliminary hearing. Hmm. Submitted as evidence by Prosecutor Payne. And this is one of Phoenix's possessions. So is this. Alright. What was it again? The court record button? Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Hmm. <laughs> well, for good time's sake, let's toy around with Phoenix for a little bit here. He found a wallet, sir. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a wallet. This is a court of law. You cannot just make wild guesses. Agreed. They're right, Mr. Wright. You have to check the court record before you answer. If you don't, your client might end up with a guilty verdict. Your client? You do realize that too, right? Uh, of course. Oh, let's give one more time. What was the piece of evidence found in the victim's body? What was the piece of evidence found in the victim's body? All right. Well, let's let's choose the right thing over here. The glasses. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed the criminal's glasses as he was being shoved, sir, and held onto them as he fell. Why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Uh -huh. Yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine. I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. Ugh. <laughs> Your Honor, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. As decisive as Mr. Wright's empty head. Hey! That... Makes no sense. What? Very well. Let's hear from more witness about this evidence. Alright, did it? Our first testimony for the day. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground, where he landed. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, and the glasses. It's hard to say she's not a culprit. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Wait, this is... Yes. I can see the name is clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Alrighty then, let's see about some stuff over here. Let me just check this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, okay. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The fact that you even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 but I we told you, those glasses aren't mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy! I'm not guilty, sir! <sighs> Nick, I know that your memory is quite foggy now, but... Suspecting your client is not something that you should do now. Your job is to defend your client and figure out any other possibilities that can lead to someone else being the killer. Innocent till proven 100% guilty. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. 
Cr cross examine? This is it. I'm calling on you. Sure. Uh, what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in with get in the witness's face. Faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court. Which means they lie from time to time. Die? But... Isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm... Like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. A. He may... I mean, he may look like a scatterbrain, and... Actually, he is at times. But he has a good soul, and he means well. Not to mention that he may surprise you at times. It doesn't matter! Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross examination, please. Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. Hmm... I do have to wonder about something, though, when it comes to that picture. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses of the victim's body, sir. Wait, did I just see that right? Was that like some sort of... Was that like a hell bar? Hmm... About those glasses... Do you have any proof that those belong to my client? The lenses are for nearsightedness, and are almost the same strength, and are almost the same strength as hers. Even the frames look kind of like the ones which she's wearing in her ID belt. Hmm. Hmm. What should I do now? Okay. Well, let's continue pressing. Hmm. This music over here. Hold it. Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Uh, um, do you have more definitive proof? I mean... Have you checked the glasses for fingerprints? I mean, it is the best way to figure out if those were hers. And if somebody else touched them other than Maggie and Dustin. Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Uh, um... The dirt and sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. Darn! I guess that method is thrown out the window. Damn you, dirt! And damn you, sand! Uh, I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. So, what you're saying, detective, is that you have nothing that proves those lessons are my clients. Um, something like that. B -b -b what? I see. Hmm. So there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing! I could totally feel it. Done in my gut. Yeah, would you look at that? We have like a hell bar this time around. We don't have like, uh, we don't have like exclamation points for getting penalized. I guess right now, each penal penalization is gonna cost me different kinds of amounts of health. Huh. Now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the detective fell pretty far. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name that... Was the name that of my client? I don't like saying it. But it was clearly the defendant's name. 
Megaster. Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter how much, no matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Hmm. Yeah, it's got a point. Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't cut me. I know the picture says Maggie, but now that she mentions it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. <laughs> yeah. Whoever wrote the name surely did a huge mistake there. Wow. <laughs> it's not even spelled like that. From what I've seen. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. I better check the court record again. Okay. Well, we can totally do that. I think that is... Uh, that is the contradiction that we're gonna have to show. Like right over here. Although it makes me question what evidence I should uh, present over here in order to, in order to contradict this. Um, crime photo? No. I mean, I can only. Am I supposed to present the photo in contradiction with this? Yeah, well, we shall totally do that. OBJECTION! Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Oh, well, I mean... If you are to look at Maggie's name and look at the dying message... Uh, really? OBJECTION DENIED. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Wright. Uh oh my first penalization. Oops, that didn't go so well. Hmm. <sighs> okay, well, in that case, what else I should present? The glasses? I mean, it's clearly... It's spelled wrong. The name is spelled wrong. It's not M-A-G-G-E-I-E. -E. It would be G-I... G G E I, from what I remember. I mean, can I even check? Uh, hey, there you go. Yeah, it says it says Maggie like that, which is spelled wrong in the photo. Actually, can I uh, can I present profiles as well? Huh. I guess so. I can present uh, profiles. What if I present uh, Maggie's profile here? What is it? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. It's a signature move, Nick. Slowly but surely you are remembering. And soon enough, you'll show them who Phoenix Wright is. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, fingered all stretched, ready to take on my opponent. What a rush! Detective Gumshoe! D you're talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Uh, where is this ridiculous question coming from? <laughs> the defendant's uh, name is uh, uh, Maggie Bird. Hmm? I mean, you did say her name correctly. But let me ask you something, Mr. Payne. How do you spell Maggie's name? I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here, and that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! It 
Looks like the bird caught the cat nappy. <laughs> What's going on here? I have no idea either, so. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defender's name is actually spelled Maggie. M I G G E Y. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I didn't even even noticed. You out of all people, Gumshu. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but. Uh... But but but. But 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 maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. Um, I'm having my doubts. It cannot be that Dustin was the one that spelled her name like that because they were both dating. They were lovers. They knew each other, so clearly he wouldn't make such a mistake. And I mean, it can very well be somebody else. Somebody somebody we are not even aware of yet that doesn't really know Maggie's name, like how it's spelled. May I remind you that it was you who said, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to have not known her name. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne. Y yes your honor. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Y yes, I'm quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gunshu, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. <laughs> 